Hello, I'm Scream Me Missing, and welcome to the Sunday Night Movie. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves... Now, everyone goes off to college, and it's a brand new experience, and you're basically on your own. But for those who don't want to be completely on their own, they get roommates. Plus side to this, you have someone that's going to be with you. You have a new friend. Someone who could possibly, if you become good enough friends, they become part of your family. Now the downside to this is you don't know who's going to be your roommate, for the most part. There's 2,000 colleges and, you know, however many roommates. You never know who you're going to get. You get someone who's completely nice and sweet, or you can get a complete psycho. Now in this movie, Rebecca has just got off to college, and uh, for the first night, she ha doesn't have a roommate. She, co she comes home drunk one night, the next morning she wakes up, and her roommate's there. Sarah Matthews introduces herself the next day. Now as the film progresses, one of my first critiques shows its face. This film has a very hard time giving you a good idea of the time span of this film. They don't exactly say... Like, a, a week passes, and they don't really say. You, you, to you, you think it's the next day, because it was night before, and now it's day. But it's been, like, a week. And, you know, then later, it's been, like, a month. It, it's just not that... It's not that realistic to be able to be like, this event happens then, and this event happens then, this event happens then. Oh, so that was a week. No, it was, like, a month and a half. It was an entire semester. They just didn't do a good job of doing just a simple line that says two weeks later. Now I know some people don't like that in films, but it's a good thing to have when you don't know exactly how long it's been between certain events happening. With with a time span of a long time, it makes sense that Sarah slowly shows her true self over time. But in the course of a week, she goes from completely normal to completely psycho? That's unrealistic. Now the cinematography in this film was astounding. Their editing and their camera angles and the transitions were brilliant, really well done, and I really loved it. That's one thing with me as a filmmaker that always sticks out. When they do good camera angles or good transitions, it helps because the ones they used in this film were kind of awkward and weird angles and stuff, and it helped you, or it made you feel uneasy, and that's what you needed for this film. You, they needed You needed to feel uneasy for this film to have an effect on you. Now, when I saw the trailer for this film, I thought it was going to be a horror film. They really overhyped it and made it seem like it was going to be this like really creepy, really dark, really disturbing film. It really wasn't that much. Maybe I've been desensitized over the years of watching so many films and Saw being one of my favorite series, but this film just, it was not a horror. It was a downright thriller. Now, a way that I personally judge the difference between a horror and a thriller is the amount of laughter that can ha that can happen. Now me, I laugh all throughout throughout Saw and back talk it and everything, but that's just who I am. I'm completely desensitized to those kind of things. I mean, I watch Jaws and I root for the shark. But the way that I judge this is the amount of laughs that you get throughout the film. The amount of times where something disturbing happens or someone gets killed or someone gets attacked or something disturbing or sad happens that you're supposed to be sad about or mad about or angry or disturbed and you just laugh now this film was loaded with tons of those and again this might be my bias of being desensitized but i laughed so many times in this movie now the thing that i really loved about this film was other than allison mccalka i'm not sure if i'm saying her last name right but she played tracy and billy zane who played professor roberts other than those two Pretty much everyone in this, in this in the cast of this film were no names. That's one thing I love about films because it gets to a point when you see actors in roles that you no longer see them as the role they're portraying within that film. You see them as a previous role, or a lot of times you see them as the very first film you saw them in. Jim Carrey, for example, I will always see him as Ace Ventura, even though he's played so many different roles. I will always see him as that character, Johnny Depp. I will always see him as Edward Scissorhands. But with this film, I do not have that problem. Because the two lead actresses, I've never heard of before. Leighton Meester, who plays Rebecca, and Minka Kelly, who plays Sarah. And these two actresses, I am excited to see them in other roles because these two are really good. They were, oh, um, Minka especially. She was really good. At, she was just such a disturbing, 
creepy character. She really brought Sarah to life, and I'm excited to see her in new roles. I, I know that she's going to do really well. The soundtracks of this film was absolutely amazing. Every single song that they used at the times they used them worked perfect for the film. They didn't seem out of place, and they meshed with the visuals of the film absolutely perfectly. The other thing that I loved about the soundtrack was the fact that, for the most part, or at least to me, every single one of those bands were no names. I had never heard them before. And I love that because a lot of times if you hear like a big big time song or a band that you love and you hear their song, you listen to the song and you were kind of drawn away from the visuals and you're not really as enveloped into the film as you should be or invested in the film as you should be. And having no name bands or bands that aren't that big or well known, that helps because the music is a very, very important part, especially if you're doing a club scene. There's gotta be there's music playing there. And having no names worked perfect because not many, not many people are going to be focusing on the music and they're going to be focusing on the visuals and they're going to be focusing on the story. I'll put the whole soundtrack down in the little doobly-doo down there and uh, I suggest checking them out. They uh, were really good bands and I loved the sound of them and they worked really good for this film. I'm actually <laughs> planning to go buy the soundtrack at some point. Now the actors and actresses within this film, they were all really good. I believed them in their characters. They drew me in. They kept my attention and they were believable. Overall, I would give it a 9 out of 10 for cinematography and editing. I would give it a 9 out of 10 for the soundtrack. I would give it a 10 out of 10 for the acting. For the story of this film, I would give it a 10 out of 10 for originality. Now for props, set design, and editing, I would give it a 10 out of 10. And finally, for the continuity of this film, I would give it an 8. There were several really small little things that most people will not notice, but for me, there are major things that just drive me crazy, which gives this film an overall 9.3. This is a great film. I would suggest you go and see it. It's a really great movie to go see on a date because there are some pop-out things that are classic of horrors and thriller films that will have your girlfriend clinging on to you. It's also really good because there's really funny moments in it. It's it's a, just a really good original story. Until next week, guys, I'm Screen Name Missing, and this is the Sunday Night Movie. Subscribe.